Welcome back, people. Um, here we'll try to keep it a little bit shorter for blue than we did for white. Uh, with white, we had to kind of explain some of the mechanics and how they affect the draft format. From, so from now on, I'm basically just going to touch on which cards are really good, which cards are really bad, and which cards we like just love for our own personal reasons. Uh, so let's just get her get her started with Jace the Living Guild Pact, aka Jace the King of Controversy. So, Jace no controversy that, on this end. Jace that doesn't get you card advantage. Um, two blue and two colorless for a five loyalty planeswalker. So it starts out really sweet. And then this plus one ability is look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them in your graveyard, and then you just put the other one back. So, tell me, why is this the most awesome? This, this, I, I absolutely love this planeswalker. It does everything that a planeswalker wants to do. It has some sort of library of manipulation, whether you call it card advantage or not. You are getting, you're looking at two cards and picking the best one. Uh, got, that's kind of what Scry does. You've got card and, quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna set up, and it, it does have a little bit of synergy with like Corsair or Crufix or anything else that manipulates the top of your library. Yep. And the negative three ability is just absolutely bonkers. The negative three is a super powerful ability. The return another target non-land permanent to its owner's hand is huge. Yep. And so the, the minus eight, the minus eight is a really, really decent um, ultimate. Yeah, so never judge you the having eight. seven more cards than the other person is really sweet. The unfortunate thing is that it doesn't affect the battlefield. So if you're already like pretty much dead with them winning next turn, it doesn't do much for you. But if you are at parity or ahead, you're way ahead. Yep. At that point. I, I, I like this card a lot. I think the five loyalty is very, very key. Yep. Um, it's coming out quite a bit of loyalty for a four. So even if they, have, they attack into it, he's most likely going to survive on turn four. And then that, that bouncing a permanent, it's a permanent, not not just the creatures. It's any per, non-land permanent. Exactly. And... Again, it's it's just a couple activations with that. It's going to make it worth it for four mana. Yes, it's not the most powerful Planeswalker ever, but sometimes when you're building a deck in Magic, you're not trying to look for power. You're trying to look for utility. And this, this card just screams utility. Oh, it's, yeah, very much utility. And I, I mean, is it standard playable? I don't think it's standard playable when Jace, Architect of Thought, is in the format. Um, it's certainly a limited bomb. I'm going to kind of inflect bomb because I'm not sure that it is a bomb, but it will help you win games. Yeah, it's actually underwhelming and limited compared to other Planeswalkers. Yeah. But so, still, I think in, I, I disagree with you in Constructed. I think it's... it. Uh, yeah, the other Jace is good. I, I could see UI control variants pr preferring this over Jace Architect of Thought, though, just for the ability to really, really influence the board. Yes, Jace Architect of Thought influences the, the card draw, which is pretty key in, in UI control, but I don't know. It, it's sixes, in my opinion. Absolutely. So I can see this card being more popular if our uh, Cons of Tarkir set has important blue graveyard interactions. So like Innistrad's block had a lot of interaction with the graveyard in terms of blue cards. Uh, you've got flashback cards. You've got things like Snapcaster. Uh, so if we see powerful effects like that, this card might see play for that specific reason. But right now, I just play Architect Thought. Is my thought. Yeah, I'm actually test this guy out to see. I, uh, again, first sight, this card looks pretty good to me. Absolutely. So let's move on to our next soul, Soul of Ravnica. Uh, the six mana six six flyer, which is way more than enough by itself in limited, like oh, just yeah. really, really, really good. And then uh, for seven mana, you draw cards for each color among permanents you control. So it'll likely be something like one or two in limited um for seven mana pretty underwhelming the fact that you can do it from your graveyard super late game in like a long sealed game is pretty sweet but a six six for six flyer guy by itself is should be more than enough for you yeah again for a mythic compared to past mythics this card is a little underwhelming to me there's some people that really like this card that they say the seven mana draw card is is really good yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I think I think it's just really a solid limited card. To me. Yeah. Again, this feels like a Muhammad e. Jin. A little bit better than Muhammad e. Jin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go Aeronaut Tinkerer. 
it's flying as long as you control an artifact. Um, would you play this guy if it didn't have the ability? Just a th two, three for three in blue. Well, I think you need to rely on that to just be. I mean, I played two threes for three before. They block two twos. Yeah. Woo. Uh, as a common, yeah, twenty third playable. Yep. And exactly. It's an upside, so it's it's fine. Um, Emphin and Path it's introducing Mage. us to a theme of blue, which will use artifacts. Absolutely. So the Path Mage, target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's a pretty sweet ability. Yep, great on a three a three two for four mana. That's that's fine. And then giving creatures unblockable, especially if you pair this with green. Green's a lot of times a strategy that I've gone in past core sets. Green blue, uh, because usually blue does have some some sort of evasion trick. Yeah. So this card this card's fine. Absolutely. And how often do you get to see a salamander wizard? Yeah. In oh sequel. yeah, look at that. Right. So here's I one of. I don't have to play that card. <laughs> Salamander Tribal, um, yeah. So dissipates. I I loved this card in Innistrad Standard. Um, I think it's a little bit less powerful now than it was before. Yeah, but with dissolve in the format too, I I can't really see people playing this. Uh, what do you really need to exile? Uh, there are a few things I guess that this would, if if Reanimator ever becomes a thing, which block it was a thing for a little bit. And then uh, I think in Born of the Gods is when the reanimator was big. So, but Dissolve's just superior in my opinion. I think, yeah, I think in this set, because you're not trying to hit uh, Snapcaster Mage targets and, and other important exile targets, like, uh, I don't know, what's another good example? Anyways, there's there's a ton of yeah. things in Innistrad block that Dissipate was important at hitting, but I think now they have Dissolve. Yep. Solve is better. Scrying one is better than exiling at this point. Yep. Divination. Everyone loves it. Play it if you're playing. Yep. Uh, Glacier Crasher. What's this guy? 5-5 five, five, Trampler for 6. And it can't attack unless there's a mountain on the battlefield. Uh, showing us that they are pushing for a blue a blue red type strategy. I, I definitely think blue red will be an archetype that you're going to go in this and it's going to be based around artifacts. Yep. So it can uh, attack if you have a mountain. Absolutely. I, I love the flavor on this too. Like it has to have that higher ground mountain to slide down to attack things. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Hydra Surge is a trick that I don't particularly love, but it does do things. Yeah, me either. Um, invisibility can't be blocked except by walls. Uh, I'm just so spoiled by the Theros block version of the unblockable card that I can't even really Where consider this cry? one. Yep. Yeah, so good for one mana. Yeah. This um, will go good in a green blue. Yeah, Give absolutely. Uh, Mind sculpt. It's, it's back. It's a mill card. Woo. <laughs> and mill might be. In, in fact, I, there's been times where I've drafted and people just completely ignore mill, and I've had like six or seven of these. Yeah, that would be that would be the tits. Um, target opponent. Yeah, so you can't even mill yourself with it. It's just, bam, seven cards, and in a, when you've got like thirty cards left. How much? What's the equivalent damage of this? I guess. Is the question? Calculator. That's the incorrect function for that. Seven divided by thirty. It's like deal two point three repeating, of course, damage. Um, yeah, and the later the game, the the more significant. Yep. Absolutely. So you could pull that out as a win. You are going to rely on them drawing a card per turn. Yep. Fantastic. So it's like them taking a third of a damage per turn. Yep. On their own. So. Okay, so, but Polymorphous Jest is a pretty sick instant speed spell. Like, until they return, each creature target player controls, loses all abilities, and becomes a blue frog with base power toughness one. Um, yeah, so you just win combat that turn by a fair margin. Yep. Don't they have the single target version of the spell in? Yeah, they have Turn to Frog in here too. So they've got Turn to Frog and Polymorphous Jest, so. Frogs galore. Lots guys. of frogs. Yeah, frogs galore. And salamanders. <laughs> Diffusion sliver. Okay, we got more slivers. Each uh, sliver. Oh, what's this? Target spell or ability. Okay, so it gives it like what the frost titan ability where it, it counters it unless you pay two. Yeah, there, wasn't there a sliver, a white blue sliver did the same thing clear back in the day? And uh, I believe it's expensive too. Yeah, well, as a, as a two mana cost sliver, this one's pretty sick. It actually does protect your slivers from. Um, like a mono black type deck, so you slam yep. this guy, and then removal becomes a lot harder. Yeah, it's a, people. The sliver people will definitely want this card. 
Absolutely. Plus the one that gives you flying. I mean, you finally have two cards worthwhile playing in blue and standard for slivers. Awkward limited, though, because there's not enough slivers to do anything. Yes, that's so, going to be I mean, the theme. Even on its own, a 1-1, one, one, eh, it's not worth playing. Yeah, that's going to be the theme, I think, for the slivers in M14. M13 had a lot of, like, it had, like, the equivalent of muscle sliver. So you've yeah, got a lot of really yeah. important slivers in M M14, and in M15 it's kind of like, uh, you could, here, try and make a deck in standard now, please. Yeah, it's giving you the filler slivers. Absolutely. So, Statute of Denial. Um, counter target spell and then loot. Nah. It's it's a counter it's plus okay. to do a thing for four mana. It's, we've seen it before. I mean, you can play it. I prefer things yep. like Rewind for constructed type decks, but... I mean, it'd be yeah, better. Yeah, this one's can start playable, but it's fine and limited. Exactly. So, Aether Spouts. For each attacking creature, its owner puts it on the top or bottom of his or her library. I think this card is huge. Me too. This I think it's very huge. overlooked. I think this card is pre-selling for, I believe, $2. Um, rares, I'm a little bit iffy on rares nowadays. Just how the amount of product that's open. Yeah. Rares are the new uncommons. But this this card is just insane. Oh, yeah. As soon as you get an alpha strike with this, it's, it is just removal. I mean, they're going to be drawing nothing but good cards off of the top of their deck, but they don't have them in their hand. That's the important thing. But you put them on the bottom. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom. Oh, its owner. Oh, I misread that. Yeah. Okay. So they get to choose, oh, but you off. still get to get rid of, you know, between one and a million creatures. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a um, Azorius Charm that hits everything. Yes. Yes. No, so I like it. I don't know if it's standard yeah. playable, but this is a huge house in limited. It, it's a great uh, cyber card, kind of the same. It'll fill the same role or actually take the place of the role of the Cyclonic Rift, I think. Yeah, Cyclonic Rift, Aetherize, that I mean, kind Cyclonic of thing. Rift, it got rid of a lot. You could, The thing with Cyclonic Rift is you could use it uh, offensively. Yes. But Aether Sprouts is, for a blue mage, a lot of times the, the, you do use it, end up using it defensively to protect yourself and then alpha swing or do whatever so it just sets your opponent back like an rg monsters list this card just really sets them back oh totally you think oh. they're coming in with lethal with you know plukronos and storm breath dragon and you're like nope <laughs> just, have fun just, casting these again go ahead and put those on the top uh so ooh, and soul artifact this is a planeswalker ability i think Enchanted Artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five in addition to its other types i know where's tezzeret right this was tezzeret so, I mean, look at those giant evil scissors. I love those evil scissors. I think this is a pretty sweet card. Um, you need to have an artifact, but if you're getting... We'll see, I guess, if there's a lot of value artifacts to put it on. Uh, Dark, Dark Steel Citadel, everyone's already... Oh, yeah, 5-5 five, five Indestructible. Indestructible. Obviously five, crazy five. amazing. That's all just a land. Or, like. An Ornithopter, is a, it's a 5-5 five, five, uh, flying Ornithopter now. But again, it's it's one of those things where they, it's very easy for you to get two for one. Yeah, but the Dark Steel Citadel people are gonna if they draft a Dark Steel Citadel they're gonna love getting this card. Absolutely, and it, it's just it might get stuck in your hand. It's a very high variance card, but I think it's the payoff is so high that it might just be worth it. Um, so the Merc Lurker, uh, which has gotta be a rap lyric later at some point. I have to write that in. Yeah, Merc, <laughs> Merc Lurker is a good one. So it's a one three, potentially a two four for three. And it can give things lifelink, um, both abilities to swamp related. So I like this one less than I like the white one. Yep. It's still, it has an advantage. Lifelink's huge and limited. Yep. Even with a two mana cost, it's still fine. A uh, two, four for three. Again, it's, it, this is going to only see play, of course, in a, a black blue deck, whereas the other one. You could just put in a mono white and be happy with the two one for two. Exactly. So that card, the the white equivalent is like you could take it first and be fairly comfortable. And then yep. this card, do you really need to be in a specific type of deck to play it? Yeah, first pack you're probably not gonna be taking this guy at all. Um. So I have a feeling you're gonna like Chief Engineer. Oh wow, this card <laughs> is just broken on multiple levels. Okay, give me give me an example of how it's how it's hugely broken. The, there's so many artifacts that, or even blue creatures that you can just spam out and then make all of your incredibly overpowered expensive artifacts like Spine of Isha and I mean in standard right now there's not the the greatest artifacts to cheat out 
Um, I'd have to look over the standard. I, I messed around with this card a little bit, but in modern, when you you pair this with some of the other abilities, uh, and 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 cards that already exist, like I was I was brewing around with a blue artifact, like the the creatures are both blue and artifact. Oh yeah. And then with with uh, the the other engineer, the, the three mana one from Scars. You see an engineer, another Vidalcan artifact, artificer that gives all artifact or all blue creatures plus one plus one, and then you can tap blue creatures to add uh, mana to cast artifacts. Okay. You have them both, and then you can really go see because it gives all artifact spells you have convoke, and those blue artifacts convoke is you can actually tap blue creatures to reduce blue mana. Yeah. And so those blue artifacts like the Leviathan, the the is it Stormtide or Levi- Leviathan? It's a reanimator target a lot. It's got Shroud and a few other things. Island Walk, Shroud, and Flying, I believe. Um, anyway, like the 714, or I, I can't remember what the card is. But a- again, it's gonna. there's going to be ways to actually utilize this with, with pre-existing uh, cards out of, I mean, even eggs, cards like eggs, and, and you, you could really cheat out. I, what you really need is more like cards like Solemn and Lacrims that replace themselves. Yeah. And then can then be utilized to tap for more things. So it, again, this card gets stronger with each subsequent set printed, to where eventually it's going to be a a very very powerful card. So if it's not exactly. powerful now, just wait a few sets. Especially wait until another Mirrodin type Mirrodin, set. If you get another if you get another Mirrodin, it's going to be huge. But yeah, but I I'll even make the argument right now that it's it's powerful enough. It's just going to take. The right person actually break it, and I've I've me- again I've messed around with it a little bit. I'm more of a person that I I learn as I go, so in theory I can start you know theory crafting a billion decks. But how I I usually learn is actually play testing, and I'm too lazy to make like proxies and, and paper proxies and play against you know my friends. But as soon as this goes live on MTGO, I, I'm definitely gonna uh, brew the crap out of this guy. So. And, mo- and again, mostly it's going to be modern. I-, I don't know if it's really going to impact standard. Well, right now in standard, you've got Darksteel Forge and you've got Colossus of Akros that are like the big, huge mana cost and, artifacts. Yeah, Colossus of Akros is meh. Yeah, so it doesn't help you pay for the ability, so it's not really that huge. And then everything you else... You Dwarf Destinies, which is kind of cool. Yeah, Dwarf you Destinies. Dwarf Destinies. Absolutely. But other than that, you've got not a ton I mean, obviously, Biden the FASA is synergy with your blue cards, but that's about it. Cool. So let's take a look at the next the next dude. Nimbus of the Isles, 3-3 three, three flyer for Filler. 5. Sweet. Um, Doesn't have flash. <laughs> the kite fins. Uh, tap target creature and opponent controls. Yeah, sure. So 3-3 three, three for 6 flyer. I mean, it's not really a bomb. It has a cool effect, but I don't think it replaces a bomb in your Again, in this your guy needed flash. Yeah. Absolutely, too too steep of a cost with that. With with flash, would have been would have been a great uncommon. This is gonna be really really late pick if you even want it. Yep. Uh, research assistant. I mean, you're looting if you're playing a really sluggish slow control deck. It could be worth it, but I mean, a one three for two is already a decent blocker and limited with all of the yeah, two the power dudes. Steep, though I mean, Murful Gluter was just so much better than this guy. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh he doesn't loot very well. He's like a level. Oh, one. back to the kite fins is whenever another creature enters, so it's a little bit more powerful. Yeah, so you no, know, you can use your own uh, your own creatures to do it, but yeah. Eh. Oh hi. I knocked and I texted. Oh okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Turn on camera. Yeah. Cool. Say hi to Kevin. Hi Kevin. This is my wife. I'm not being seen. <laughs> Hello. Okay, she's not being seen. She just came back from roller derby, so Sweaty. <laughs> she's all exercisey. Cool. We're just doing a review. Bye. <laughs> all right. No. All right. There, Add some Canadian content to the video. <laughs> Tim Hortons, the free ad. <laughs> <laughs> Chrono stutter. Too expensive. No kidding. D- did I stutter? No, you didn't because you didn't play the card. Um, Master of Predicaments. This is a big wall of text. When it deals combat damage to a player, choose a card in your hand. That player guesses whether the card's converted mana cost is greater than four. 
If the player gets wrong, you may cast a card without paying its mana cost. So this is this is mind games. This yeah, is the, this, I love mind games. This is a total mind game card, and actually, uh, four four for five mana, not bad. Not bad. So you get to play a bomb. You get to do some mind games. This is totally a sealed card for me. Totally a draft <laughs> card for me. I'll have fun with this card. Absolutely. And I, I just love the art. Love the Sphinx. And he's just... What a predicament. I just love it. I love that one. Uh, illusor, illusory? It's not illusionary. It's Illusory Angel. And this card is pretty sick, actually. Uh, yep. If you've cast another spell this turn, it's a 4-4 four, four for 3. Um, there's a lot of free spells in modern. Um, I'm not sure if this is the type of card you would play in modern, but it, it does dodge bolt. Yeah. And there's free spells right now. There's ornithopter. Yeah. You've got ornithopter. So if you've got ornithopter, ornithopter. yeah, but I mean, even, even if you go like first turn or uh, fourth turn, you're casting like a soldier of the pantheon. And then this guy in a blue white aggro deck, that's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. Or, uh, a fourth turn play a four four flyer yep so i mean you're gonna love playing this card every time you get to put it on the battlefield you're gonna love having it on the battlefield so i think it's just you just take it yeah it's very 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 powerful and limited yes uh wall of frost also very powerful and limited yep so if you're playing yep, against it's... a low evasion deck it almost just shuts them down yeah hoses green mm -hmm. it's, there's no worse feeling than playing green and seeing this come down totally plus it uh it blocks almost all of the souls so there's that too that could be your answer to their souls that don't pump so i guess the white one still gets through but mm -hmm. um turn to frog awesome spell great removal for blue it's about as close as you get to destroy target creature in blue um block and cast and it is another way to kill master away or you know kill all the tokens from master waves or Yep. Again, the gods. Yep. Totally. Uh, Peel from reality. So this is an interesting one. I mean, at its very worst, you're taking their best creature and putting it in their hand, and you're taking your worst creature and putting it in their hand. Yep. And at the very best, you're saving your creature and bouncing. At the very best, you're, you're bouncing your ability. one drop and playing Illusory Angel on turn yeah. four. Yeah. Or, or, or again, it's instant speed, so you're saving yep. one of your guys exactly. from imminent death and then bouncing one of theirs so again if they doom blade or the equivalent of doom blade i don't know what it is in this this format you get to save it and set them back kind of a turn yeah so it, it is a, a pretty sweet pseudo two for one uh for you and crust is good but it's not as good as claustrophobia um yeah it just it doesn't automatically tap the thing so it's just not quite there but it'll get it'll make things hard for people um, and you can do an artifact as well Yes. That's a big, big difference. Um, That's true. Again, I'll have to look at the artifacts to see if there's any ones that we, yeah, we really so care just, about keeping tapped down. But It is just permanent. So, yeah, yeah artifact to creature permanent. Perfect. Uh, Stormtide Leviathan is one that I saw in M13. Uh, I was pretty new at the time, so I didn't play it. But I think you just it's just so expensive. Yep. But Again, it, it it's does sort of, those... of just win you the game when you play it. So it would it's not my style of limited, and I don't think anyone's going to have very much success with it, but who knows? Mine either. This, yeah. this will rot in your hand a lot more than it will actually see play. Absolutely. Again, newer players tend to, or may I say bad players, uh, <laughs> tend to think about the times that they won with a card rather than think about the times when the card was hindering their game plan yeah and this is the perfect card for you it, if it, again if this comes out it's gonna win yes and but good luck actually getting it out unless it gets peeled from i guess reality. with the sphinx you can get it out right oh uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That's predicament. it costs less than four <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got the paragon the blue paragon um having something be bigger and gain flying is what you want to do in limited so i see this this guy having a lot of success um, then again, a lot of the blue creatures that you play are going to already have flying. Yeah, so that that's might what, be a I thing. Wish it didn't blue Maybe. there. So what what ability would you put on this guy? Uh, evergreen ability instead of flying. What's another blue? Unblockable thing? would be another target blue creature gets unblockable. Maybe unblockable seems better. Um, yeah, we can leave it at that. I think that's. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely playable in limited. Yeah, I'm looking at all these cards. Flying, flying. This guy has his own way. 
of getting blocking. This guy can get flying. Um, yeah, this one has flying. What do you put this on? Uh, you put it on Fugitive Wizard, obviously. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a bunch of one threes <laughs> and things like that. Wall of Frost, you could give flying. I don't know. Yeah, you could give Wall of, you could give Wall of Frost flying and then block all of the... Yeah. Of the, yeah, so you could do it. Perfect. Uh, Welcome Turn. This is a card I've been playing a lot of in Limited. It's just fine. Yeah. This is the exact... Yep. Actually, this is the same card as... Um, Void... Some, Vapor. Vaporkin. Is that what it is? Paper can, yeah. Whatever. It's the same. It's just not an uh, elemental. elemental. So, yeah. What can you do? Into the Void seems like a pretty strong card. Yeah, you have to have two targets, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, Jace is and in... it's sorcery speed, so that's kind of... Sorcery speed is what really knocks it down for me. Like, instant speed is, is a way bigger effect. In yeah, this, you want bounce coming. spells to be instant speed. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about drawing three cards at instant speed? I feel pretty good about Great. it. Great. <laughs> awesome card. I feel pretty decent about that. I also feel pretty good about negating people's non-creature spells. Yep. Um, Mercurial Pretender looks pretty interesting. Is this just a clone that can re-clone? Yep. Yeah, so and goes, we already have one of those in standard. It only. goes back to your hand. For nine, it can become a, a new clone. It's the blue... Uh, it is the blue pre-release card. And it does not draw me into blue at all. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's especially probably the weakest one. Especially because it's a creature you control. So you can't even copy oh, their yeah, bomb. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So it's it's actually just for that reason it's it's not good. <laughs> I'm sure the was it um bio biovisionary decks will maybe love They'll this card. They'll appreciate having another copy. Another yeah. clone. They'll definitely appreciate having another clone, but I don't know if we're going to see that being played in, in anything no oh. it's casual deck but still now they have another clone they can literally put all clones in their deck yeah so how do we feel about turning bunnies into alligators uh, uh this this you're looking at jalira yes so sacrifice another Too creature slow. reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature card put that card onto the battlefield and the rest is in the bottom of your library in any random order, I guess. Not even in any order, just in a random order. Still get so, Blight Steel Colossus. So you've got, yeah, I guess you've got a million scry effects in standard right now. Yeah. So you destroy your worst creature, get a scryed creature. Seems okay, but in limited, it looks so slow. Well, in standard, even, it looks so slow. Yeah, limited, it might be okay if you... Brew around it again. It's a way to get Stormtide Leviathan into play, but again, you're locking that out. Yeah. It it does seem to be it needs some sort of library manipulation. Uh, again, most of those actually are more legacy than anything. Yeah. Most of the library manipulation they've uh, banned in in modern. But there again, you said there is Scry. There are some cards that do dig pretty deep, like uh, the Sphinx, the three five Sphinx. Yeah, Prognosis Sphinx. Prognosis, yeah. And so, but again, you need a big, right? I don't think there's much cards that are worth reanimating right now, or not reanimating, cheating to play, besides cheating. like Worm, not, not Worm Quill Engine, World Spine Worm or Ashen Rider. Yeah. Those there's would be a, the there's two. There's a few. I mean, if, let's, let's put it this way if you get Jalira and you get Jace and you get Leviathan, you have a way to find him and put him into play, but you probably still going to lose because it's going to take you like 10 turns so yeah, traditionally these decks that in constructed don't play any other creatures i mean you could actually the cool thing about this is you can actually play four jaleras yeah and then you're not going to play any creatures at all what you're going to do is just play something that um like the land that puts a zero one token when it comes into play yeah and then it's going to be blight steel colossus so this could potentially be a a, a card in modern. I'm trying to think of the card, but it's isn't it an instant that does it right now, or a sorcery that does it now, not a creature. The problem with these cards, and there, it seems like this has been a theme because we've had the kind of Isochron Scepter type card. What is it, the Melitus Astron? No, Melitus. The one that copies a spell. Uh, um, out of Theros. Charlatan. Or, yeah, and we we had a. I think it, it's like almost every one of these sets we have this creature that's doing what another card used to do. But the problem with these is again they. They take the initial investment of their casting cost, and then they usually take like a steep uh, activation. Yeah. 
uh, cost as well. So again, if you get this card to stick and are able to activate it, it has unlimited potential. But you know, let's be frank here. Good luck with that. Exactly, it's going to take you a long time. Uh, Chasm Skulker. I remember looking at this card earlier and hoping to get it at pre-release. So when you draw yeah, a cool card, card, put a plus one plus one counter on, on Chasm Stalker, and what is it? Um, the the crew fix enchantment that makes everybody draw more cards. Like this this card has a place in the deck, in the group hug deck, where you're making them draw cards too. You've got like um, Dust Mental Seer and cards like that. Or is that just put in your hand? Well, this one was only when you draw a card, so... Yeah, so, but, but I mean, those are, like, some yeah. more gems that make you draw cards. But, yeah, the fact that it just gets better when it dies is pretty insane. And then you, you have some funny combos in Standard. You have the Guild Mage that whenever uh, you can remove a plus one plus one counter from a card to draw a card. Yeah. Oh yeah, so that's so that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I mean, it, again, it's it, it. You could find some synergies that are pretty sweet. I like this card because it's it's pretty value. It, the longer you, uh, this card stays out. Wasn't there a card clear back in the day that was like this each turn? Every time you draw a card or, or during your upkeep, put a plus one plus counter on it. That's basically what this says too. Oh, yeah, but there's actually ways to, um, manipulate more card draws per. No turn, of course. Yeah. This guy can actually get very big, and then when they answer him, you get a ton of squid tokens. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Brainstorm loves this guy, for sure. But I don't see this guy it, going into Legacy anytime soon. Yeah. Whenever. Yeah. Whenever you draw a card, so it's for every dish. Every card is considered being drawn, right? Yeah. So you'd be so plus just three. Draw three cards. Yeah. It's three counters. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah, this, that this makes has, it a lot. This card has flash and flying. So what does it do? Oh, it's got downside. Damn. Enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless you return another creature to you control this owner's hand. So I mean, you can use it to save something. Yep, it's a great card. Uh, there's been cards like this in the past that actually have seen uh, constructed playable. Okay. Yeah, so but because uh, we it, do like, have one in standard right now. We do. It, it's um, it's the blue white one, right? Blue white. Yeah, it's a blue white bear. Does the same thing, but it doesn't have flying, which is the important. Yeah, yeah. Piece. This is much better. It's a lot easier on the mana. And I, I like it. I like Quickling. I think that it has the potential of seeing play. It's a nice little way to save. I, I, I think this would actually be better if it was double blue for Devotion. Uh, but it would be a way to save, uh, especially Banishing Light. Like, this card is really cool against Banishing Light because they, they name it, then you, you bounce it, and then the Banishing Light just basically fizzles, and then you're able to recast whatever and again entering the battlefield effects this is kind of cool it's a way to actually get it back to your hand yep even though you know you can't there's no real way to flicker i don't think in in standard at the moment so this is the best you have is to return to hand yeah i like this i'm gonna put it in my deck for sure because let's be honest i'm gonna play blue at the pre-release probably <laughs> yeah um, frost links it's a two two for three when it enters battlefield tap target creature opponent controls it doesn't untap during its controls next untap step that's a pretty decent card yeah, way decent card for a common. Yeah, for a Jeez. for a common, that's that's There's a frost titan. Super decent. Well, sort of a frost titan. Hey, it's an elemental too, so it gets pumped up by master blade. <laughs> ah, that's right. It's a three three. So yeah, you know that's, that's not bad though because that's that's basically it's a replacement for the merfolk guy. And then the merfolk dude did have double devotion on it. The, mer the tap target green creature or red creature and doesn't untap. Oh no, that's just single devotion. Uh, the uh, tidebinder mage. Tidebinder mage is double blue. Is he? Oh yeah, he is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. But yeah. this one, so, this guy costs three. But this is any color, so I mean. So maybe it, it's worth it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have yeah, to see how that one I think shakes this out. Card is, is it's very powerful for a common. Extremely powerful for oh, a yes. common. In fact, this is if there's anything to get you into blue, it'd be frost links because it's. Yeah, it's it's nutty for a common. Oh yeah, it's easy on the mana too. Powerful common so far that have. Uh, they've made an M15. So how do you feel about military intelligence? This card seems uh, kind of like a win more to me. If you're already attacking with two creatures, I mean, the odds are that you need to draw more cards to win is going to be kind of iffy. And the mana cost is kind of weird because you're not going to get value out of it the turn you play it because you're not going to have two creatures out. Yeah. So they might as well have made it three mana casting cost. Yeah, because it's going to take your third turn. Exactly. Does this does this replace Bident in um, 
like a mono blue list? No, because first of all, Biden is double blue, and you're you're drawing a card for each attacking creature. Yeah. This just says whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. So it's only one trigger per turn, no matter what. Yeah. And on on turn two, you're going to want to be playing your devotion creatures anyway. And Biden, it, Biden's uh, secondary ability was so huge. Yeah. You made them all attack in, and then uh, you swing for the win the following turn because they have no blockers. Yeah. Or you make him attack into a Thassa. It was it that, that is very underrated. <laughs> it was with, dirty. With the bite of it was super dirty. Uh, Coral Barrier. This is the um, okay. So against another blue player, this is actually a pretty sweet card. It's your defender that gives you a, a one one blue squid with Island Walk. So it's it's, it's, it's not bad against hyper aggressive decks either. Yeah, it gives you uh, two power on board. So I mean, and another blocker. I, I yep. I think this is a, a better card than it looks at first. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Again, it, it when judging the a a card, you always have to think of what it's going to be played against, and that's one of the biggest mistakes again of newer players, is in the past they've they've looked at cards and, and they don't understand why it saw play or why it didn't see play. There's cer- certain times that like Desecration Demon didn't see any play. Yeah. Until the very end of last block. Uh, when it actually had some synergy with Disciple of Bullis. But now it sees a ton of play because there's a card called Thought Seize that really helps set it up. Yes. Um, and then it's the same thing. So when evaluating a card, even Pillar of Flame was such a huge card in Theros. Right. And I don't know if Pillar of Flame would even see any play in um, current day standard if it was, if no. it was in print. Because Magma Spray is not seeing much play. Well, you're not. Because there's really nothing you care about exiling. So it's it's... Coral Barrier, if you're looking in a limited format, you're, we've already gone over white that has a 3 1 uh, for 2 mana. And the the barrier can trade with that, of course, and it can block a 2 1 and, yep. and survive. And the 1 1 can trade with the 3 1. So you're getting incredible value out of this guy. It's doing what Blue wants to do is stall until you get your bigger flyers out. Absolutely. I really like it. And then the last card is Return Target Non Land Permanent to its owner's hand for 1 blue, which is great, but it is sorcery speed. So it's not yep. really a trick. Um, I there was an equivalent card in, um, in a strat I believe that had flashback and that saw a ton of play. Yeah, it did have flashback in uh, in limited. I think this card is a fine card. I I don't know if you would take it right away. I think it's a fine card though. Yeah, it's good in tempo decks. Very good. Again, if, it's going to be one of those green blue strategies. Yeah, get the one attacker out of the way and then send in all of your dudes. Uh, that's that's it for blue. So. I don't know. Overall, I think I feel like white mm, was a little bit stronger than blue is, just because the bombs were more bomby, and the uh, yep. the mid range cards were kind of just the same amount of mid range as the blue cards are. So yeah, and the rare the rares in blue didn't seem nearly as good as the rares in in white as far as a limited standpoint. But I mean, that might be the advantage to blue is it might go under the radar and you just can get a you know four or five frost links. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Just win the game from that. Exactly. So. Just you, your guys never untap. I hope you're cool with that. You're not. Too but as bad. far as for the pre-release, yeah, I think it's a weaker card, a weaker color than white. Absolutely. Okay. I guess that uh, wraps up our blue discussion, and we'll see you again next time in black. Love black.